Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Becoming Podcast. We have a wonderful guest with us this evening who is, uh, she has a lot of similar interests as I do as well. So we'll be looking forward to having a talk to Ellie in a moment. But before we do, um, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Share at uh, webdesignshare.com. And when you get a chance, please like, share, uh, comment, and subscribe. That'd be great. But uh, Ellie, hi. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the Becoming Podcast. It's lovely to have you uh, on here. Tell me, where are you coming from? Hey, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me. Originally, I was born in the Caribbean. I was born and raised in Dominican Republic, but I moved to Canada in my early 20s. Right now, I live in the sub-Arctic. I live in the Yukon Territory in Canada. It's the northeast. It's kind of close to the border with Alaska. Okay, wow, oh, excellent. And uh, tell us, what do you do? What do I do? That's the question of the million dollars. What do I do? Hmm. I'm a shamanic practitioner. I was trained by the um, online energy medicine, St. Matthew, with the renowned Four Winds Society. Um, I practice shamanism every day. For me, it's a form of life. It's not a class that I took. It encompasses everything that I do. Um, I also trained in holistic nutrition and I have great faith in the healing power of food. Food was something that at a point in my life gave me my body back. So I love food. I'm always cooking and I just, I love gathering herbs and picking mushrooms and things like that. Mostly I work with women. Mostly my clients are women who have experienced trauma and sometimes I also work with children. Okay, great. And how did you get into it? What, what sort of what got you into this line? What sort of opened the doorway for you? You know, it's a really funny story because I never thought I would um, have like a change of life that would be so deep and transformational. When when I was in my twenties and my thirties, I used to work in the corporate world. I used to be an executive assistant to directors and CEOs, working fourteen-hour days. You know, really. Um, unhealthy, not eating properly, things like that. I also experienced a um, somewhat challenging and traumatic upbringing, like a lot of family conflicts and abuse and things like that. And I carried kind of like a heavy backpack of stuff with me. So by the time I was 36, between my childhood trauma, being in a marriage that was not very nurturing, in my really heavy workload, I ended up having a stroke. I had a stroke. I was working in a remote location. Um, the stroke wa was not properly diagnosed. They sent me home. I had to take a really long flight by myself on crutches, be on a wheelchair. I got home and I was by myself and I was not thinking properly. It took me a few days to go and get an MRI done. And then since then, my health just continued to deteriorate to the point that I couldn't walk I couldn't talk, I couldn't see, I had crutches. Um, it was, the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and it just continued to get worse and worse. Um, I was dating somebody who was much older than me. It was kind of like a very turbulent time. And at some point I was living in South America and um, I ended up having a second stroke, which was smaller. And that was just like the cherry on top. Um, I couldn't even shower standing up. It was really terrible. And then at that time I, I became epileptic. So I started having seizures that the doctors couldn't fix. The pills weren't working and I was desperate. So I started dabbling into natural medicine. I saw a bioenergetic doctor, which I was like, what is this? I don't know. But he helped me a lot. He started me on acupuncture and supplements and things. But that was like the bare minimum right and from there and onwards i went on a quest to heal myself i was 36 years old i was not going to accept that reality of being disabled of not being able to walk and you know provide for myself and then little by little things started to shift in my life i started dating someone who i say was the beginning of my healing because he started taking me to naturopaths and nutritionists and things like that and um, from then onwards, I loved it so much that I said, I'm going to study nutrition. And then nutrition really changed my life. I was able to rebalance my thyroid, to reduce the frequency of the seizures and stuff. But I still felt really unwell because at the same time that I had gotten sick physically, 
I was also processing a lot of grief. Um, I was getting divorced and, I, and my mom passed away 10 days after my stroke. So you can imagine that life just hit me like a freight train. Um, and I was just destroyed. I was devastated. I didn't know what was up, what was down. And then food was the beginning, but I wanted to go deeper. So I started playing a little bit with energy. My first love was Reiki. And then Reiki was like, whoa, you know? And then I started reading the cards. I took a class with Doreen Virtue when she was still teaching, but I still felt like I needed to go deeper. And at the same time, I felt myself shifting in the sense that I had a job in the mining industry and it was not working with me. I had like a really good salary, but it wasn't making me happy. So funny story, my husband and I went to a health conference in Mexico and he decided to buy a ticket for a cacao ceremony. And I was like, eh, whatever, I don't want to go. I don't even know what this is. And I had been really sick because somebody had been at work really sick and I ended up you know, catching whatever it was. So I got to Mexico and I was really sick. I can tell you that that cacao ceremony changed my life. It was like nothing I've ever experienced before. It was like a coming home for me. It was like, oh, this is home. This is what I've been searching for. So that was my intro to shamanism. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's so much in, the, in, that, in that time span there. I mean, the strokes, not one, but two. I mean, oh my gosh, I mean, that's a, that's enough for most people just to change their whole outlook on life, as well as all the other things going on with, with the separations, um, you know, and, and also their mother passing and everything else happening at that same time. What a, what a, a time to look outside of you rather than feeling sorry for yourself. You had the strength and the, and the makeup to, to get up and do these things for yourself. I mean, that, that, you know, did that take a lot of energy, a lot of work to do that? Or did you just find you just stepped into the rhythm and it seemed to flow for you? It was really hard. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. There were many times when I wanted to throw in the towel, but I kept going because I knew there was something out there that would help me bring balance to my life and like live a more meaningful and purpose purposeful life. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and a lot of us, I mean, I, I started, uh, when I first began, I started with massage. Uh, that was my introduction to it. And I was in my early 20s, I was doing sports massage then, and then got in with a lady, um, Isabel Russell, when you Plymouth, who introduced me to Q Q12 energy healing, and nobody knew what that was, but they knew what Reiki was. So Reiki was my sort of people understood. And then, it, it, like yourself, it moved from there. You know, and then uh, and then we got into these other things, and then for you, the nutrition. I mean, that was that was self healing for you, really, wasn't it? This was bringing all the nutrients and all the vitamins what you needed at that time. Absolutely, because the thing is that we can accumulate nutritional deficiencies throughout our lives. The thing is that your bones and your organs will take years to actually start showing up the signs of um, malnutrition, if you may. And the thing is that the food that we eat nowadays is so depleted because of the way that we farm and people don't take care of their crops. And it's like a really deep subject going into everything that's going on with the food industry. And also, you know, everybody has a different digestive system. People have allergies, people have intolerances. Um, I'm also celiac, which I didn't know. And, you know, like, like all of those things, it's more of like seeing a human, like a comprehensive entity. I often tell my clients that they can imagine themselves as if they were part of a symphony, like the body is a symphony. Yeah. If the first violin is off, you know, it's going to sound like, wah, 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 wah. It's, you know, it's not right. Yeah, really. And yeah, uh, but the, the nutrition, the, the energy work and, and working with the people now, but you had to go through this whole healing process yourself. So how long, I mean, that's obviously still ongoing because we're still humans, we're still here, although we're, we're um, becoming more luminous beings as we go along. But roughly how long did it take you to get to a stage where you started to feel comfortable in your own body? Mm, that's a very good question. Um, so the final, the last stroke was in 2014. I would say only in the past four or five years. I would say that I'm experiencing optimal health. Like I feel really good. I'm 46 and I feel like I'm in my 20s or in my even in my teens. Like I don't have any pain. I'm not on any medication. 
I have energy. Um, I just feel really good. Wow, fantastic. And you got into the same as myself, the shamanic energy medicine with the four winds. Um, mm, with, with, that with, was quite something. Oh, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Yes. yes. What about you? Know, it, you know, Alberto had been kind of like in my, like appearing, popping up in and out in my life. Um, I used to have a membership with Hay House. And, you know, he's one of the authors that was published by Hay House. So I would get... Uh, little snippets here and there but it never really spoke to me but one day I don't know I saw one of I saw an ad and I saw they had an open house and I went to the it was a virtual open house and I went and he just spoke to me and um and, and I knew it was a considerable investment and I'm like well whomever is listening it out there if you want me to do this you will provide me the finances to be able to cover the expense of this class Believe it or not, something really funny happened. I got accepted to the school one day, and the day after I got a job offer. And after that, I took that job. The training was six months. I got fired, I think, one week before the training was over, but everything was paid off. So hmm. um, I can tell you that the training changed my life forever, that I feel as good as if I, if I had gone for 25 years of therapy. It's a good way of, like, it's a good metaphor of explaining how much, how deep, how transformational the process was. Yeah, it really does. And when you go around the medicine wheel um, and you do it once, but then you're part of the family and you can redo the courses as well, which is lovely, which, which they put together for you. And, and I know, I think I've been around three times now. And the first one was, I remember, sort of a bit of a haze in a way. Um, and then the second and third ones, there, there's a lot of clearing, a lot of cleaning going on, um, a lot of shifting, a lot of movements. And then certainly the last one, a lot more subtle shifts and things were happening to me, which I, which I, which I loved as well. Um, but I know when I picked up, I was given Alberto's book, um, Shaman Healer Sage, and from the first chapter, I just resonated with him. Um, such a lovely man. And uh, and then, of course, yeah, I've pretty much got all the books and done all the courses, probably like yourself. But it is just a, a huge lifestyle change, isn't it? Not only for ourselves, but all the people that, um, you know, that, that we're working with. Yes, I can tell you that it's changed my life in so many ways. I have been lucky that my husband is very supportive because my house is like a living altar. There is flowers everywhere, uh, crystals everywhere, feathers. He he finds feathers in the in the forest and he brings them to me. Um, it's a big change because you become, in a sense, more discerning in the ways that you choose to expand your energy. You know, and it's a more con conscientious and aware way of living. Like you are more mindful of. Well, what you eat, what you drink. For example, I'm not a big alcohol drinker. It just doesn't resonate with me. Like I'll go to a bar to have a pizza because they have really good pizza. But, you know, it's not. And I've also noticed that a lot of relationships have fallen off. Like I have very many good friends who happen also to be shamanic practitioners. Um, yeah, it's been a big shift for sure. Yeah, and and talking about that, uh, the friends do who who are not you know um, as we develop as we grow as our energies change a lot of them do drift away, uh, but then sort of new friends and new people that we meet do come into our lives, and also the alcohol as well. Yeah, I yeah I'm not sure the last time I had any alcohol as well. This is the second time I've been alcohol free, uh, and it makes a big difference because we are more sensitive. To what's going on around us and when we're working with people and we're picking up messages all the time um, especially when we're channeling uh, that, that's one thing that blocks it right from the start i mean i'm sure you'd find the same absolutely um the thing is that hmm, the more work we do the more we shed we there are more layers that keep coming up right and you have to be really aware and listen and pay attention and the idea for a shaman or a medicine person is to become what is called a hollow bone. Some people call it a flute. And all those things that interfere with your energy, um, like dealing with your own drama, eating high vibrational foods, um, any form of addiction. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be alcohol. Some people are addicted to the internet, for example, or shopping. You know, it's like 
bringing that deep level of self-awareness and kindness and understanding towards yourself. Yeah, no, very much so. And you also um, you take workshops as well uh, and ceremonies. Is that the shamanic work and you do others? I saw on your website that you do uh, cacao ceremonies as well. So, um, I mean, how is that coming across? Is that is that in person or remote or are you doing a mixture of both? Hmm. Right now I'm doing uh, monthly cacao ceremonies, which are like a mix of everything that I know. It's like a mix of different medicines, if you may. It's like a women's circle, but not. Um, I learned how to facilitate um, working with cacao with my Mexican and Guatemalan teachers. And my teacher taught me how to make the most beautiful um, altars. So I love the part of building the altar. And then it's like a gathering of friends. I, I take pride in facilitating like a really safe nurturing container because I tend to work with traumatized individuals because that's part of what I experience. So that's part of what I can hold hands for other people, right? So that's part of the, the people that gravitate towards me. So it's, it's a ceremony. We do a lot of shamanic journeying. Um, I do a little bit of divination for them. And my favorite part is that I always close off the ceremonies with dancing. We do some somatic dancing just, you know, to shake it off. And people are really surprised because I start blasting the techno really loud. And they're like, what? Wasn't it just very mystical now? How is this so loud? I'm like, yeah, I just shake it, you know? Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole whole area that, that you're working on there. Um, and you said before, but with the ceremonies that you're doing, that you're working with with a lot of mainly women. Yes, that's right. That's that's your sort of main area that you're working with. Is there an area of expertise that you specialize in, or because, like we know, with the shamanic work, it encompasses so such a big area, such a broad area? Yes, um, you know, it's really funny that you mentioned that because after a hundred clients with the same profile, I stopped counting, and I was like, "Great spirit, why did you send me this?" Why must you make me look at this? Um, it's beautiful, it's deep, it's private, it's sensitive, but my main area of expertise is working with sexual trauma. Okay. So I work with a lot of people who have endured abuse, physical, mental, spiritual, um, and uh, people with chronic illness, people that have experienced life altering things, uh, pain management, um, people that feel lost sometimes that they don't know how to move on after a major catastrophic event, things like that. Right, right. And doing doing the, the work that you're doing um, and the story that you've shared with us about your your um, about the stroke and your own medical conditions, uh, the, what the question was going to be, did you have to make you know, a lot of changes in your life? But you had to make the changes anyway for your own health and well-being on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Um, but, but for you, you found this enjoyable. You found this like exciting to do to get into this. That it, it sort of like for myself, I was excited and I wanted to get into this. I wanted to share this. And I know sometimes when I'm talking with people, and I, I start like now, I start speaking quite quickly, you know, because yes. we're so excited. Is this the, the same for yourself as well? It's funny that you say that. My husband told me, remember to speak slow. You speak too fast. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, um, I find after sessions, I feel elated. I feel recharged. I feel happy. I go to bed knowing that I made a difference for a fellow human. Um, the changes that I had to make are pretty much having firm boundaries, you know, being mindful of how much time I spend on my phone. I have a pretty regimented life. I mean, it's somewhat flexible, but I, you know, I eat, I am always drinking water. I go for forest walks. I get regular sessions with uh, colleagues um, because I work with people so much and I have to be mindful of keeping my energy clear right and i also i'm going through my own process i'm human right so i'm working through things um but yeah it's um sometimes it's quite intense and i am mindful also of paying attention for the signs of compassion fatigue because you know when you're in the caring professions it's common for people to get burnt out right 
Yeah, very much so. And I, for myself, and I'm sure yourself, clearing, you know, every day after a client, um, my morning meditations are pretty much all about clearing and protection around me. And then, of course, in the evening as well. So, yeah, very much about protecting ourselves and protecting our space. Um, because when we are working with dark and heavy energies, although we are a flute or although we are a, a hollow bone, as it were, uh, the energies can still be around. It's important for us really to um, to take care of ourselves as well as everyone else. And I agree, I'm the same. Usually after a session, I'm I'm buzzing as well. I'm feeling you know, energetic, feeling feeling good. But then if you're starting to do quite a few in the day, um, you stay you, you sleep very well at night time. For sure. Um, I find that I have a limit of three to maximum, maximum five clients in one day. And that would be like in a special case. Um, for example, last like year I was I was invited, I had the honor of being invited to a flying only community here that is like in like 60 kilometers from the North Pole. Like, well, no, the Arctic. Sorry, my geography fails me sometimes. Um, so it's like a really remote, secluded place. And because of the particular conditions, I was seeing four to five clients a day. Normally, I don't see more than two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, for me, three, three is comfortable. If I'm doing a, you know more days in a row as well. Um, so yeah, I understand. I understand what you're saying there. So if somebody comes to see you either remotely or in person, what can they expect when they with what you're offering? How how do you sort of put together your your um, the, the visits when they come to see you? Mm, I like to be very transparent. I like being very ethical. Um, I like people to feel safe and comfortable. I like explaining what I'm doing. Um, the first thing that I do is to send a very comprehensive intake form. And it asks people about their physical health, their mental health, um, patterns that repeat in their families and stuff like that. And that gives me a good sense, more or less, of when, where they're coming from. Um, and then I explain to them, usually the first thing that I do is what is called an illumination, which is a form of clearing, you know, working with the chakra system, looking for um, trauma imprints, anything left over from physical trauma, you know, car crashes, operations, things like that, just like a good deep clearing. Um, and then they also get the added bonus of getting personalized nutrition um, uh, recommendations. Because if I look at people, I will see, for example, they have dandruff. That's usually a sign of having low zinc, for example, or having spots in their nails. That's also low zinc. I see people with, um, you know, the little red dots that people get in the back of their arms. That's signs of dairy and gluten intolerance. So when I look at people, when they walk into my office, I just look at them and I allow them to relax and, you know, tell me, I like to, how can you say this? I am very particular in the sense that I, I like working with the core wounds of people. I don't like fluff and buff. I like for people to get value from their sessions, right? So once we do the energy work and a little bit of nutritional, um, you know, consulting, I tend to send people a wellness plan, which includes recommendations for the management of their energy or recommending them to other practitioners. Um, I will recommend flower essences, um, vitamins, minerals, whatever it happens to be, and next steps. Uh, people usually know when it's time to go for their next session. I have people that come once a year. I have people that want to come every month. It kind of it's like a case by case. Yeah, yeah, very much. It's very similar to, to what I have as well. But certainly with yourself, they're getting the holistic, the whole the whole approach there you know looking at uh, everything from you know nutrition to the energy side to to the whole mental side as well so i mean that is that's wonderful well done well done um if, there is, um if there's something that you'd like people to take away from this podcast um is this what would you like to share with them hmm. anything i think the most crucial thing to remember right now is that there is hope that the body fix itself, the soul heals, the mind heals. Uh, even when things appear to be really dark, there is always, always a glimmer of light. And our prayers are always answered in different ways. Sometimes it's a person, sometimes it's a song, sometimes it's a book. But, um, you know, miracles do happen. Yeah, yeah, no, they do um, very much so. And, oh, um, 
for people to come and to see you and to be with you uh, and to get their healings. I mean, and that is wonderful. And, and I really do, you know, thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing that with the, with us and everyone out there. Um, how, how can people get in contact with you? What's the best way for them to do that? He would be either sending me an email at info at elifabra.com or you can find me on Instagram. My handle is I am Ellie Fabra. Uh, and my website, it's www.elifabra.com. Fantastic. So. And we're going to put those down below, all those contact details and that as well. So you can get hold of Ellie as well uh, from all those sites. But uh, Ellie, is there anything you'd like to finish with, with uh, the people out there before we um, we bring this sort of podcast to a close? Hmm. Actually, yes, there is. You know, when I was going through my health um, ordeals, I wish, I wish, I wish. I could go back in time and tell myself, shamans exist. There is shamanism. <laughs> you know, there are, others for, there are other forms of healing. Like I used to be a regular at the doctor. Like I, I was going like once a month or every two weeks or every week in the, in the lowest of the low. And yes, just knowing that there is a, like a holistic approach. Like there is, and like it's never too late. Even if you feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel right now, you can always little by little start climbing out of whatever you are yeah very much so and and the shamanic energy medicine does encompass so many different areas when we're working with people uh, and so thank you for sharing you know for yours as well that that's wonderful um ellie fabra thank you very much for coming on to the uh, becoming podcast has been this really has been very special um like to thank share at um at webdesignshare.com and please like share subscribe comment all the usual things as we through the Becoming podcast, bringing you more wonderful people doing wonderful things for Pachamama, Mother Earth, Mother Gaia around the world. So, Ali, thank you very much. And uh, you, I think we'll, we'll need to get you back on again because you've got so much to share. So we look forward to hopefully doing that in the future. Thank you, Jamie. Have a beautiful day. Yay. And those watching the, the podcast, thanks again for our community. And we'll look at and uh, catch up with you soon. Bye for now.